Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Strong Collectors Podcast. I'm your host, Dakota, here with my co-host, Jordan. And although we don't have the Hasbro team with us here, we wanted to kind of go through some of the questions we would ask the team if they were to ever join us for an episode. So, mm-hmm. you know, Hasbro team, if you're listening, feel free to answer our questions in the comic comments or uh, just uh, send me an email and we'll get you on. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll clear that, our schedule. We'll clear our schedule. That Maybe. Tell me, busy. Tell, tell me the time and place. I'll be there. <laughs> um, let's we've got about, I don't know, seven ish questions here. Um, mm-hmm. So. I'll start off something that is big. I think in the community is the leaks for the Marvel legends. Uh, every year, Jordan and I are waiting uh, patiently for rectangular to post the uh, Marvel legends to come for the year. Mm-hmm. And to me, I see that as something super helpful for a, my budgeting uh, and yeah. B, I think also building that anticipation because you know when you see a character on that list that you're like oh that's one that i want i can't wait to see what they do because you know the leaks aren't usually like rectangular saying like here is the new hulkbuster and he's holding it in his hand he's like Mm -hmm. hulkbuster will be coming and then that leads us to speculate what will that look like and other characters like that so my question to hasbro would be how do you feel when you see those whether that's Mm -hmm. rectangular or even us when we talk about rectangulars leaks and we do our own speculation on them do you think that negatively impacts the community or hasbro as a company so i'd love Mm -hmm. to hear their thoughts on that um another one i would like to know how figures are picked uh because you will hear dan and i feel like it's mostly dan doing the break dancing uh to try to get the figures that he wants or whether it's toe joints or whatever um how much weight does that break dancing really pull (laughs) Right. Um, but is it because then we've also heard like Dan, who is like says mm-hmm. constantly, at least earlier before the new Punisher was released, he was saying that he wanted a new Punisher because it was his anniversary and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Other, you know, action figure YouTubers like I keep saying I want a Kashala. Jordan keeps saying he wants a Frankencastle. Does it matter how many times we say that before one gets made? If I say it 100 times, then, you know, they put it on the list. Um, right. How, how do they pick those out? Because especially with characters, like obviously we know Spider-Man's going to get made. Iron Man's going to get mm-hmm. made. Those characters, sure, they're staples. They're always coming. It's probably not much right. thought other than which version are we doing. Right. But when it comes to characters like Chris Star and deep cuts like that, how did they choose those? So I'd love to know that. Yeah. Yeah. I think just that question of like the logistical process, you know, like mm-hmm. when you're deciding, because I know they decide obviously it's not like what are we doing next year it's like quite a bit in advance Mm -hmm. because they have to produce them and everything but yeah like is there like a sit down brainstorm is it like you kind of have a get a general idea or like yeah how do you even land on that kind of thing i'd be curious to know that another question that we would have is about the idea of shelf space so as collectors, Dakota, we very much value our shelf space, right? We only have so much of it. So I think kind of like how does that factor into larger figures, uh, you know, has labs, whatever that might be, um, deciding like Galactus being really tall, Engine of Vengeance taller. I got a giant man coming. I don't know where he's going <laughs> to fit in. Um, but, you know, like thinking about a character like Foom, Fain Fain Foom, which would have to be quite big, uh, like mm-hmm. how much do you factor in the limitation of, of size when it comes to some of that scaling process yeah uh another one so we've got the new made to order uh dragon man that's going to be coming out that's kind of taking the place of the Haslab this year i'd be curious to know and maybe they don't have an answer for this yet because it's so new and they're maybe going to test things out but i would like to know how many of those they're planning on doing uh Mm. per year if they know uh because with Haslab, that's really like once a year is probably the sweet spot for that at most because mm-hmm. it's you know usually that two to four hundred dollar price tag, which is pretty significant for especially Marvel Legend collectors. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas if we're going to be getting Dragon Man and we don't know what the price is going to be, hopefully it's in that hundred dollars or less category. But if they are in that sort of price range. You know, my wallets, it's probably healthy enough that I could see maybe two, maybe three if you were really pushing it. Um, so I would be curious to know kind of how many of those they're planning on. 
a question I would have is around dioramas, accessories, mm -hmm. effect sets, that kind of stuff. I will always hear people clamoring for that. I know that we were thinking maybe with these made to order things, you could maybe get dio pieces or something like that. Um, but even getting into, I think, a set accessories and effects, I could see people going for because for the most part, they're going to the outside. I mean, whatever you get for accessories or effects, but, you know, like can of beams for your effects and things. Like, would it mm -hmm. make sense to have a Marvel Legends branded, like, laser beams or explosions or, you know, even like McFarlane doing the accessory weapons pack? And then yeah. you could have all kinds of, you could actually have, like, the branded, like, let Marvel style ones in there, too, if you wanted. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I wonder, like, what that could logistically look like or if that would be feasible or if that's something they've ever thought about. I think we could we could probably do a whole episode on that, because, like, even just thinking of, like, like a McFarlane style weapon kit, like you could get big mm -hmm. giant blasters for your cable um, and, like, some of those more specific weapons that are just kind of like, you know, very comic booky. So I, I like that one. Uh, another question is about soft goods. So we've started, I mean, we've seen soft goods for quite a while with Legends, like back to that um, Guardians of the Galaxy, that Gamora has like a soft mm -hmm. goods poncho, um, like that SDCC She-Hulk has the soft goods kind of ripped up clothes. Uh, but more recently, I think we've seen it, it's starting to come out more often with whether it's the Retro Beast lab coat, the Hank Pym lab coat, now the uh, Doctor Doom cape. Mm -hmm. um, so we're starting to see it more and more. I'm curious to know if they're going to continue this trend and make it to where, you know, every cape we see in the future will eventually be uh, soft goods because, you know, they don't, they never just snap their fingers and everything changes right away. Usually mm -hmm. it, it builds up kind of like pinless joints, double jointed females, um, stuff like that. So will this eventually lead to all soft goods capes or, you know, coats like is gambit going to be the next one to come out with a soft goods coat stuff like that mm -hmm. um and will they continue to progress in the way of uh wired soft goods as well whether that's lab coats or capes because we've seen mcfarlane go from what i think is pretty cheap not very good looking mm -hmm. batman capes that i would say are just don't look very good now and not even very long like a year later right they're they're you know not on par with like mafex but for 20 bucks pretty good. it's pretty good yeah uh, and it from promo shots of what's to come it's he's making leaps and bounds in soft goods i think in such a short time yeah is that marvel legends trajectory as well because mm. i'll say i personally would prefer i don't know oh, no dude, soft if I had goods. like a sentry with a cloth good wired cape from legends <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, I don't know. I just I feel like I like the plastic though. I, well, I'm just saying if they did want, like not everyone sure. needs to have it, but if they got to that point, yeah. with the wired okay. cape tech, I think if it's just that little what Doom looks like he's got, I'd be mm -hmm. like, I don't. Yeah, like you said, I'd yeah. rather almost have a plastic one. Yeah. At that point. So I guess that's where my question is coming. Is Doom the version of McFarlane's you know '89 Batman that came in that Batmobile, which I think was pretty like, eh. but then give them a year and they're going to be putting out some sick soft goods that, cape with the wire that wired gambit cloak yeah because that would be sweet <laughs> yeah but if, cool. if gambit comes with a lab coat you know just a brown lab coat like the uh beast and hank pym i'm not really interested in that That's so mm -hmm. yeah uh one that i was thinking about you know i've always talked about my battle damage spider-man dakota mm -hmm. and i maybe like how feasible would it be to be doing these battle dance. Well, I think we talked about this before the idea of even like variants. Like, remember back in the day, you had the Toy Biz where at the same time you'd mm. release two versions of the character. Yeah. I get like logistically, maybe it makes sense to stretch them out, but if sure. they're similar enough, I wonder if they've ever, and they kind of do that, like the homage to, you know, the Toe Hinge or like we're doing it retro, like mm -hmm. Toy Biz did. So, yeah. Uh, would you ever see like variants or like a battle damage version of a character? Um, something like that. I think would be because I'm sure they thought about that at some point. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see it. Another one that my wife had asked about Hasbro team is uh, she wants to know how many females are consulted in the female uh, in the focus groups for female figures. Um, 
she's a little tired of some of the dainty ones. She likes like she wants a sif that's like a she hulk, you know, mm. you know, substantial uh figure. And uh I'm not sure what those groups looked like, but that was her question. Yeah. I know we've seen some folks in our comments that are maybe not they're not really so worried about Sif looking jacked. They're more worried about, you know, Rogue looking like she's, you know, that savage. And they're like, oh, the thong's not thong enough right. for, you know, whoever it is. And I'm like, eh, that's not as important to me as like maybe that's right. Sif. I think the Sif is probably a cooler mm -hmm. direction for the female characters. But anyway, um, those know. are some of our questions that, you know, if the Hasbro team would ever love to grace us with their presence on the show, we'd love to ask them some of these questions. Uh, let us know down in the in the comments below what questions you would love to ask the Hasbro team. And I will put this caveat, uh, make them questions that we could actually ask the Hasbro team. You'll notice that we didn't say, where is my Kashala? Where is Jordan's uh, Frankencastle? Because those are questions that the Hasbro team is not going to answer. Give us some questions that you think the Hasbro team would actually answer. Make sure you're liking, sharing, and subscribing. And until next time, stay strong. It's okay if you have one good idea. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs>